Okay, you know what? Uh, in our dining table, in our humble household, sir, from the moment I was young until, until now, we always talk about corrupt government officials. This was like a long, long time ago, back in the 80s until now. We still have the problem of corruption. Why do you think that a lot of government officials are being accused or are corrupt? What is, what is going on with, with the Philippines, sir? Has it being a third world have anything to do with it? Well, there's corruption. Even in first world countries, you will hear American talk, Americans talk about corruption even in their own country. Okay. Corrupt, corruption is there because number one, people are inherently corrupt in nature. Okay. The Bible tells us that we are a corrupt nature. Number two, when, when the opportunity allows, uh, there will be corruption when there's money and uh, um, uh, people don't get punished for corruption. Corruption will always exist. So that's why corruption here in the Philippines. Um, we don't have enough judges. Um, we only have 2,500 judges adjudicating for 110 million Filipinos. So there are judges that have 6,000 cases pending in their salas, meaning even if they try to finish one case a day, we will only finish 365 cases a year. And we still have over 5,600 cases pending plus the new cases that will come in. So that ratio has to be improved. You know, we have to have commensurate judges, commensurate courts, commensurate prosecutors to hasten the justice system. Number two, um, you know, uh, because, you know, once you filed it in court, it stays there forever, you know. So that's the that's that's why the laws are not being implemented here. So people don't fear the law, and um, you know, with other countries uh, like the states, you bring the same Filipino guy um, from the Philippines. You know, let's same get the same driver, one driver uh, driving inside Subic. Filipino driver driving driving inside Subic, the Filipino guy will follow the rules. He will stop at the stop signs. He will drive within his lane and um, within speed speed limit. But uh, take the same guy and have the same guy, um, you know, get out of Subic just right after the gate. The moment he gets out, he's a different driver. Why because, is that? Hey, you didn't notice that. You, you, I noticed that this is safe right because the laws don't get implemented outside Subic. We back to the LTO guys and the police guys here that really don't um, implement traffic or if even if you get caught, there all there are always ways to get out of uh, getting arrested or getting ticketed or getting um, stopped. Here yeah, you can talk to them, you can bully them, you can you can pay them off, you know. So. Um, when laws don't get implemented, then nobody fears the law and nobody disobeys the law. What did so you that's, mean, that's sir, when you said, uh, what, what did you mean when you said uh, we are inherently corrupt? That's our nature. What, what does that mean exactly? Uh, the, the Bible tells us that uh, man is corrupt in nature. Why is after that? After the fall of man. Okay. Because, because of the sin. Okay. After man's fall, Adam and Eve uh, sinned then uh, we were separated with God. So uh, we, sin was embedded in our heart, in our flesh, in our, in, our, in our blood. So that's why we die. So we are a corrupt nature. Okay. So that, that's why there's corruption in this world. You know? So what do we do? Can, we, can a day come, can a day come that there will... Um, we, there will be no more corruption in the country or in the world, no. That day will never come. It will only come on, when Jesus Christ comes. But what we can do is that we can minimize this to the barest minimum by instituting office and putting, putting um, uh, you know, righteous people in office who will do what is right and implement and apply what is right. Not just do what is right, but 
um, apply in this office, apply in this country, in this area of jurisdiction, um, what needs to be done or justice. Yeah. You know, there are less corrupt societies. In fact, uh, you know, there is an index of corruption, right? Um, you know, most of the Nordic regions, for example, places like New Zealand, Sweden, and all of that, they're less corrupt there. Uh, does it have anything to do with culture, sir? Uh, there are several theories that I have come up with for the past few years that I've been, um, you know, um, studying corruption. My number one theory is uh, people here in the Philippines think like this. Ngayon, kayong, uh, maybe next time, kami naman. You know what I mean? Like, so, uh, yeah. you, you know, that's why they tolerate corruption because, you know, yeah. they feel that, you know, it's, it's, they're going to steal now, but wait till I'm there in, in power. I'll, I'll, I'll steal just as well. That kind of mindset. What are your thoughts on that? Theory of mind, sir. Yes. yes, because we, that's what I'm saying, because laws don't get implemented. Okay. So they know that uh, if they, if they, if their day comes, then they can also abuse their power in, in office to make money, to get okay. money. But once laws get implemented, like now, what happened to the Philippines, when uh, President Duterte came and he started to fight corruption, and he put me in office and he created the PACC, he created the ARTA. Um, ARTA, corruption was depressed because he was exposing it. We were putting them to jail. We were filing cases. We were investigating left and right. So corruption dropped. Um, in fact, you talk to the, um, you know, you talk before I left office as chairman of the PACC, I collected um, all the government's um, achievements in the anti-corruption campaign. Um, in my term, in my term, um, we have filed the most number of cases against high-ranking government officials in history under the office of the president. We kicked out the most number of government officials in office, the president and I. Um, we jailed the most number of uh, government officials sent to jail because of corruption and we investigated the most investigated the most number of cases uh, bind all administration they'll be a far second from what they have accomplished and because of that oh, let me give you some numbers we have filed over 154 cases in less than three years we have kicked out over 800 employees of government officials of government because of corruption they put to jail 24 government officials uh, in my time. Um, there's there's more now. Um, and we have... Um, because of this, um, uh, revenues for the country grew. You talk to the Bureau of Customs, there's still corruption in these offices and in government. But you talk to the Bureau of Customs, the uh, Bureau of Internal Revenues, they will tell you that they have been hitting their revenue targets consistently every month for over over two years, something that never happened uh, in, in their history. The Bureau of Immigration recorded a record-breaking um, collection of 10 billion pesos in one month, something that never happened in the in, in Bureau of Immigration history, meaning all these monies were already in the industry, but were going to um, corruption and not to government coffers. And as evidence, we now have build, build, build. We have constructed roads, um, uh, buildings, airports, and seaports far more than other administration has, using the same people and having the same money. And um, we have we have more ayudas, tupad, aix, and um, social services. And we have we have funds to fund malasakit centers. Where did it, where did this all where did all this money come from? This this money all came from from corruption from money that used to go to corruption now went to go, the government coffers. So now, suffice it to say, our ranking in the uh, corruption index has uh, climbed up, yeah. right? Under 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 you. So my my other theory is, hear me out on this, okay? My other theory is, uh, because of our culture, we love family so much, right? We, you know, we value family so much. We value family so much that we will do anything for them, even steal from them or for them so that, 
you know, your children, their children's 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 children will be provided for, you know, ad nauseum. So uh, they will do everything for their children. What are your thoughts on that kind of mentality, sir? I don't think all Filipinos or most Filipinos uh, would, you know, want to feed their family with stolen money. You know, um, I know, I know one for myself, and I know more. I know a lot of people that you know work hard, work hard to provide for their family. There are some Filipinos and even high-ranking government officials that don't care, but not all. Um, yes, we love our family. We will do everything for our family, um, but not a lot of people will sell their dignity for. Um, you know, for, you know, just to be rich. You know, Sometimes in our it, can be a, it can be an excuse, you know. Exactly. You know, but, uh, um, I, I don't think that's the same for, er for everyone. Now, the, per the, the, un the corruption perception index um, is a perception index. Of course, that yes. That means um, it's based on media um, and what people say. It's not actually based on um, uh, facts or data. Okay, good. So, so we have the data. So what's the data like? And why don't they check the data too? No, because it's what people say. That's, that's uh, what the... Uh, no, but it's data. Data is hard, right? Isn't data hard? Isn't that ones and yeah. zeros? Yeah. What they, I'm saying is um, per, the corruption perception index based their... Um, on perception alone. Yeah, they base it on the media and the press and, and transparency and exposing corruption is part of a strong anti-corruption campaign. Okay. It is the first time in Philippine history that we have a president leading the exposés. Okay. So when the president talks about corruption, of course, the whole country gets involved. Mm -hmm. So people feel people feel that there's so much corruption today because. The president is talking about it. Of course, the whole nation is talking about it. Of course, our perception also rose up, or perception, corruption perception index also rose up because there are there are corruption cases being resolved. Yeah, we have been talking about corruption, not just the president, but the, for decades now, right? I mean, like yeah, this is a, this is a, this is a topic time. that that we are talking. We have been talking about for ages now. That's why a lot of people, my age, our age, are sick and tired of. Of government, right? That's why one of the reasons, perhaps, why they don't want to follow rules or pay the right amount of taxes or dues is because you know they're just going to go to corruption. That kind of mentality. Some of us have actually given up hope, right? What do you say, sir, to the Filipino who who feels uh, exactly what I'm telling you that you know we you, you have been a taxpayer for you know a long time. You you know you have been you know earning your keep. You've been working hard. And all of that stuff, but for decades now, it's been the same old story of people stealing from government. Uh, what do you say to that person, sir? Um, you want a better country? Then come help out. You you know what's uh, best, and you know what uh, what should be done. Then come and help out. You know we need good people in government. We need strong people in government, and we need people upright people in government. And because Probably be you're the one needed here. So, um, you know, walk the talk, come over, join the fight, and uh, let's do what we have to do. Look at the numbers, look at the data. Uh, our anti corruption campaign is at its best right now. Compared um, to? Compared to all other administrations. So, um, so what are the figures? That's what, I'm, that's what I told you, um, sir. Um, the Bureau of Immigration, the, Bu the Bureau of Internal Revenues, the Bureau of Customs has been hitting record-breaking um, revenue collection or co revenue targets. So is, is that the gauge? Is that the gauge? Of the, their, it, their, their collection? Because I, I, I have a few friends uh, from, from, from that department uh, for, for a few years now, for uh, more than 10 years now, they have been hitting the record. Uh, they've been breaking the records no, of, their, no. of their collections in, the, in, in, no, in uh, have not. Have, some parts. No, they have not. They have, they have consistent, they have been hitting their revenue target collection consistently every month. That means 
there are less smuggling, there are less, um, there are less, what do you call this? Um, under the table and all that uh, stuff, right? Under the table, yeah. Um, and money is going into government coffers. Second result, more projects instituted or completed by government. There are more roads, more buildings, more airports and seaports that has been ever completed by this administration compared to the past administrations using the same people. These are the same people who has been working with other presidents. And uh, with the same money that's just growing every year uh, normally, but they've completed more than what the others, uh, others have. There are more, no more ghost projects now. There are no more ghost projects now. Um, what else? Um, it's the first time uh, that we see that during the pandemic, government has money to give people for ayuda, for AX, for Tupad. You know, where did all this money come from? It all came from the anti-corruption. It was the result of the anti-corruption campaign. Didn't the it president already, say that we have run out of money already for, for because of the pandemic? Yes, run out of money that we hope we have. But okay. we still have a lot of money giving out because we got a lot of savings. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, it's it's going to the people. Maybe not all. If corruption was at uh, fifty percent before, maybe corruption is at. So, 10%. so you, I'm I'm glad that you mentioned a percentage. So, um, what is the percentage of corruption now? You, I know that you mentioned about customs and all of that stuff, but you know, we we can't pull up a figure uh, from just one department of government, right? So overall, sir, what's, how do you gauge the, the lessening of corruption? Very much. Uh, how do you gauge? You, you, ask, you, ask the, you, you have to ask the uh, people in government implementing the projects and the program. Okay, okay. Um, are they still getting involved in corruption or... Where is the most, where, where is uh, corruption uh, really big right now? It's in the local government level. The, the PACC and the president has no jurisdiction. Yeah, for, uh, from what I understand, yes. Okay. You, you know what, so sir? We what, them. What, we, what happened to them was they got so scared of the president, so scared of us, that corruption lessened. But since They realize that, well, you know, these guys can't really investigate us or put us to jail if we just, all they can do is file cases against us and expose us. Mm -hmm. So if we do this correctly and quietly, we can still get away. That's the local government. So we want to extend the PACC down to the local level and to the barangays. So it will but, have the that, but, but that's the thing, sir. The, the thing with, with corruption, like I said earlier in the, in the previous uh, part of our interview was, uh, that corruption becomes a tool, right? It becomes a tool in in elections, right? In fact, uh, n you know, it's it's really during the elections that the word corruption is is very prevalent, right? I mean, we uh, candidates accuse each other of corruption, so medyo, you know, it 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 can be used as a tool uh, by 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 anyone, right? Yeah, that's right, that's right. Um, it's popular during election time, but uh, you know the PACC has been working in and out of um, in and sir, out sir, of elections. Is, is there a way for a government official to enrich himself without being corrupt in government? Huh? No, no. You have to be. You really have to be. Con Uh, is there is there a loophole, Basar? Is there a loophole that that you know you're 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 not corrupt, you're a government official, but you you can make money. Is there a way to do that? Oh, then you have to you have to live. You have you know you save up your salary. Okay. So that's it. That's the only way. You can't get rich in government. Okay. You can't get get rich in government. You're just getting paid here. Okay. I mean. Jigs, if, if I was corrupt, I should be a billionaire right now. Absolutely, absolutely. But uh, uh, see, see, the thing is, um, 
so um, when you're a government official, um, uh, you, you you also can't uh, provide, let's say, uh, appoint or assign your 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 family with uh, with uh, some sort of ways to make money as well, right? You can't do that. There's a there's there's a law against oh. that as well, right? Yeah, nepotism. Yeah. So what, what's the, the what's the extent of that law? Like from how far can a family member be a part of 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 whatever it is that you're doing? I'm I'm not sure. I think uh, for fourth degree, uh, fourth degree rel relation attorney, fourth degree relationship is a uh, nepotism. Fourth degree. So okay. that should be your cousin, no? Second cousin first. Your first cousin. You cannot um, employ your first cousin. Is that right? You know what? One of one of the weird things about our culture, sir, is that uh, people, most of the people here in the Philippines, admire wealthy people, right? Whether they they got it from from you know from hard work or from you know from the government stolen from the government, the people generally like rich people, right? They want to yeah. be associated with rich people. They want to be with rich people, and they want to vote for somebody who who's flashy and rich and all that stuff. So what do you think that is, sir? I think that's uh, that's human nature. It's not just uh, the Philippines. It's uh, all over the world. Okay. You will notice it. If they don't really in... care where the money came from, right? Well, yeah, because wealth uh, equates to success yeah. in uh, normal <laughs> mind. Right? So whether whatever industry you get into, they want to be like you. Mm -hmm. you know? So well, it's, not, it's not for, you know, even in, even in other other countries, it's the same. Mm -hmm. You know, people admire um, actors and kings and leaders, especially you know precisely because they display power and wealth. I think there are certain cultures, sir. Like from what I understand, I have some Filipino friends in New Zealand. Uh, people in New Zealand, in their culture, they frown upon people who are rich that they're, they're, that they're becoming super successful. They look at them and say, "What? Do you, what's going on with you? Why? You know, why are you living like that when you know you can live like this?" You know, so the society there actually frowns upon the super successful. There, in fact, you can't be too successful in in uh, New Zealand. In fact, I was watching a, an episode of, of Anthony Bourdain when he was in New Zealand. You know, restaurants there they don't really want to brag and get too successful because people don't like that you're too successful. It, that's their culture. Um, our culture, sir, how do you define, how do you explain the Filipino culture when it comes to uh, acquiring wealth and, and in relation to corruption? The display, the display of wealth and power yeah. is actually different from actually being wealthy. Yeah. So dress rich but don't mm -hmm. have money. Mm -hmm. and some people dress poor and yet they're very wealthy. Mm -hmm. That's common here in the Philippines. The yeah. Chinese do that too, the back. Mm. They dress very simple. The house and the bank. The Filipinos are different. They they dress rich, but don't got <laughs> don't got no money, no. Okay. <laughs> it's a cultural thing also for us, yeah. no. Yeah. yeah. We want to look good. Right? Yeah. Maybe because of of us being a a third world, I guess. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like the Filipinos, Filipinos in the States, they are, uh, I think it's a cultural thing, you know. It's just we like dressing up. We like, you know, it's just, you know, part of uh, um, another side of the Filipinos. But because there's other side, there's other part of Filipinos that live very simple. But of course, of course, um, display of wealth and power always catches anyone's attention. Yeah, flashy car, you know. Yeah, even Americans will look at you if you drive. Yeah. If anyone drives around here with a Lamborghini, even Americans or whatever uh, nation they are, will look at you, right? So, you know, people are attracted to wealth and power. You know, so that 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 is a that that is a motivation for corruption. Because people look up to you, right? Yeah, people if you're, want if you're, to be like, mm -hmm. they respect you because it, it shows them that you're somebody or something and you're, 
you have power and people people want to escape you know hardship and poverty and just want to be like you you know sir um i was i was uh, so, sorry but i've been i've been uh, i've been um researching and you know because i had more time to prepare for this interview and i i, I stumbled upon a a a uh, a video of of uh of you on youtube uh, at least uh, you being talked about on youtube uh, uh, pertaining to uh, a certain maharlika uh, uh okay. and uh and a, a certain doctor from from basilan okay. i think if i'm not mistaken uh and i i don't see any response from you uh, on that end um why is that and or, or if oh, so i probably would, was not able to find it but what is yeah. your response uh to okay. that yeah i officially gave my statement already yeah but they continue to talk about these issues these lies about me mm -hmm. Um, because every time they use me in their shows, they gain traction. <laughs> okay. So they come up with lies. So one with Maharlika, he accused me out of nowhere for being behind the filing of case, a case, uh, okay. filing the disqualification case against Bongbong Marcos. I denied that because I have nothing to do with it. The guy who filed the case against Marcos was a presidential candidate and so he has he has interest in having bong bong disqualified and being making himself and making himself famous now maharlika was trying so hard to connect that guy to me by saying that i was one who backed up this guy or told this guy to file a case because probably being president of the the uh, PBBS, where the president, President Duterte and Senator Bongo belongs, uh, he's trying to probably she's trying to, uh, you know, endear himself to Bongbong by using me. Okay, but she has no evidence to that effect. What she has are pictures of me and that guy got, um, picked up from Facebook because that person and Maharlika were among the 13,000 people who wrote me asking for help. And because their issues were beyond PACC's jurisdiction, I endorsed their issues to the appropriate agencies, to NBI and to whatever agency that has jurisdiction over their case. What Maharlika wanted me to do is to run after his, her enemy and pin them down because he knows that it was my job um, under this administration to fight against corruption. The guy he is, uh, she is after, he is after to, it's not a government official. And the issue is not about corruption. It's, it's SAFA. It's an NBI issue. Okay. So she, she's, uh, she's uh, putting all this together. And then, um, you know, suddenly I was in the picture um, because of that. So government official. And when people see me, and they know me, it's normal for people to ask pictures from me. Mm -hmm. So not because they have pictures from me, we're close. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's over there are thousands of Filipinos have pictures with me. I'm not <laughs> close to them because of, I, I, if I see a popular guy, a popular girl, I take pictures with them too. Uh -huh. Doesn't close. Uh -huh. So there's nothing to prove. Okay. Now that doctor, now that Dr. Human is the same thing. I helped him so that in the end, he, his enemy, his political enemy was, um, was charged in the office of the Ombudsman because of me, the mayors and the vice mayor. But then he wants these guys in jail. The thing is that is not within the power of the PACC to put anyone to jail. I wish I had. And I don't have power over local governments. I will have to file the case. So we did file the case um, together with the appropriate agency, the DALG. But now he comes around because he's been making money through donations through OF, to the OFWs. That, so that doctor? Comes, yeah. He's no longer working. Eh? Mm. No longer working. He's asking donations from OFWs. And when he took me uh, as his topic, 
his engagement went up. And the donations so, went up. Donations went up also. <laughs> He's been in jail four times for Staffa. They're that 20- doctor? Yes. Oh my they, God, okay. That's Staffa um, for, um, what do you call this? Um, what's his case? Cyber libel. 27 cases or almost 30 cases of cyber libel. Mm-hmm. He's been in jail for four times because of that. Um, the first question is, if he is the one telling the truth, why is he the one getting in jail or going to jail? <laughs> he has, he has 20, over 20 more cases of the same. Wow. They're just getting this for, for political grandstanding, you know. For political- well, or for eyeballs, for, for views, right? I think, I think that's really the commodity now online, right? The, the views. Right. And, 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 uh, if, and if, you don't, if you don't know how to play that, you know, the, the numbers game, sometimes, you know, uh, you lose. Uh, in fact, a lot of elections have been won because of that ability to, uh, to attract attention, to attract eyeballs, to attract views and likes and all of that stuff, which is really the sad state of things. Which brings me to my next uh, question, sir. Um, one of the biggest perceptions about being or running for office is that it is ridiculously expensive to become, uh, you know, mayor, to become senator, to become president of the Republic of the Philippines. It takes millions if not billions of pesos to run a campaign how can you have that much money in your coffers by yourself you know you've got to have you know ways and means to be able to fund your campaign if you don't then you will lose um what are your thoughts on that and connect that with corruption sir okay uh number one we have a party the party is raising funds okay for the campaign okay so Candidates like me uh, can run. Um, number two, I just do my job. I I go around. Um, I tell people what I've done. I tell people what they will do. And I help them as much as I can while I'm here. The rest, I give it, you know, I give it all to God and to the Filipino people. Um, with, to, with, with regards to... Um, would you would you believe, Jigs? I've not paid for one poster um, that I have right now, and I've been seeing a couple all over the Philippines, even billboards from people I don't know who is putting it up. Um, oh, it, it, is that a misconception then that it takes a lot of money to run a senatorial it campaign? Does it does take a lot of money? Like how much are we looking at? Hundreds of millions. Well, the Comelec allows you to spend up to 300 million for this election. Okay. For, for, and, for, for, uh, for senator? For, for national... senator. Okay. No, no, no. For uh, president, for national office. Okay. Because they allow five pe- you to spend five pesos per candidate. There's 60 million candidates. Uh, per voter, you mean? Per, per voter. Yeah. Yeah, there's 60 million voters. So you can spend up to 300 million. And, you know, EVs and radios ask a lot of money to yeah. get online, the right? So those people who believe uh, who'd like a better country uh, must help and campaign. You know, uh, the campaign requires money. It requires effort. And it requires money. So if you don't put up money, you don't win. So if you want to, if you're complaining about corruption, you're complaining about drugs, then we have to do something. We have to campaign because if we don't campaign, if we don't spend, we don't win. But if so you're a corrupt always... official, sir, if you're if you're a corrupt government official and you have a lot of money, then you can't lose. Uh, yeah, you have you have more probability of winning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but there are corrupt officials who still lose even when they have money mm-hmm. because of the perception. You know, we got a lot of money, but you know, there's just too much uh, wrong perception, bad perception going against them. They still lose. Sir, um, when you say um, a corrupt government official, how do you, how do you actually uh, decide? Because it's difficult. Uh, because everybody has been accused of corruption one way or another, right? And I'm confused. Who really is corrupt? Everybody's corrupt, or, or no one's corrupt. So, um, how about how about getting convicted? For example, uh, is that is that a good measure of how corrupt an individual, a person, a government official is? Would that yeah. be uh, correct? Conviction. 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 Conviction because okay. conviction uh, and is, is really what we need to make sure that, yeah, what is based on evidence, 
um, uh, this is what's true. But don't we have convicted government officials who are running for office or, or are still in office? Yeah, that's true. So how's that? Well, yeah. well you know, that's politics. That's, uh, that's different from what is lawful. It's different from what is legal. Politics is what's popular. You know? I remember my grandfather once said, it is only corruption if you are not part of it. What are your thoughts on that, sir? Uh, so, the, the law, the law is, that's a funny statement. It can be true in one way. I mean, it's like not looking at or looking at the other way, but then corruption is corruption. It's uh, clearly defined in, in law. And, uh, you know, it's using your power, it's abusing your power to um, uh, gain for personal gain. You know, we always, like I said earlier, uh, we always complain about corruption. My folks always complain about corruption. My, my mom and dad always co complain about corruption. But, but here's the funny part. They would ask me to say, uh, can you find a way for us to, uh, let's say, um, uh, move, uh, move up the line in, 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 uh, in vaccination, for example? Wait, 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 wait. wait a minute. Didn't you just complain about corruption? Isn't that uh, a, a kind of corruption, sir, to be, let's say, ahead yeah. of the line? Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. But everything went well. That's where corruption exists. In. It exists in, in difficult areas and difficult systems. Yeah. That's why we have to change and simplify systems. Bro, um, can I? Can we do this uh, another another uh, maybe after a while? I, no, I no. Um, you can just uh, you can we can just wrap it up now, uh, mm -hmm. sir, if you don't mind. And we can do it again too. But uh, you can wrap this up so I can post something. And maybe we can do another interview, maybe perhaps uh, some other time. So as, as um, Commissioner, uh, as sec uh, Secretary, former Secretary uh, Belhika, sir, um, you're running for uh, uh, the position of the Republic of the uh, Senator of the Republic of the Philippines. What is your message to all the Filipinos, especially all the Cebuanos who are watching this interview? Go ahead, sir. Um, to all the Cebuanos, uh, first of all, um, know that we, you are always in our mind, in our heart. We hope that you recover quickly, everyone is safe, and that uh, we can all help. We all want to help um, everyone um, who has been stricken by Odette. So uh, please know that we love you and you are, you are in our heart. Number two, for all the Filipinos, uh, we are all standing at a crossroad. We are going to choose the next leader. We are choosing whether to continue whatever the president has started or we're choosing, we're going to choose to change it altogether. Um, and the, the uh, candidates who will vote will be the one to answer it. So my, uh, my reminder to everyone is to vote wisely, to hear out and look at all the candidates Listen to everything that they will say, but also check on their background, check on their track record, because what they will say, none of us know, or what we say, nobody knows if we will do it really. But what we have done is the only thing that we can all hold on to um, of who we really are. So check the track record and uh, vote wisely. So all the candidates are all good. They all have plans, they all, all have track records. I love you too. You want, yeah, all of them have track records. All of them have a good plan. But if you really want a good fight or a better fight or a stronger fight against corruption, I can do that for you. Where can they catch you on the social media platform, sir? Go ahead, tell them. Yeah, you can uh, check me out at www.grecobelica.com or you can check out my Facebook, uh, Greco Bellica, um, to get updates of uh, my recent activities. Okay, thank you so much, sir. And I'll be asking you another batch of new questions, maybe perhaps next week or whenever you're free. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. sir. I know you're busy on the campaign trail. I wish you luck. And we are rooting for you here in Cebu. Thank you so much and good luck. Thank Stay safe, sir. Much. I appreciate it. Uh, I love Cebu. I love you, Cebuanos. God bless the Philippines. Thank you. Thank you. God thank bless. you. Take care.